By the end of this video, you'll be able to look up for your target stock data and be able to apply the text slicing techniques in web scraping. This is for education purpose only. I'm not held responsible for the accuracy, completeness, and other potential loss associated to anything shown in this video. So today I'm going to try web scraping some livestock data, as you can see from this website. It is just for education purpose. So just make sure you have the right to access the data and do the web scraping. Let me just open up the terminal. And just like we did for the last time, let me go back to the environment. If you want to set up your virtual environment, please refer to the video in the description below. So I'm just going back to the environment, activate it. I believe dot IDO. Open up the Python shell, press Ctrl N to create a new Python file. I will just oops, press Ctrl S to save it. Save it to the desktop inside the folder called Python script, which is this one. The Python script folder that I built previously. So the Python script, I just called it example. Okay. So before that, let me just put up the shebang line because I want to activate it in the terminal later in the later stage. It's perfectly okay even if you don't put up the shebang line. So I'm going to put that into the home. The user is Pi. I didn't change my Raspberry Pi user. And my environment is test372. You might have your own environment name. Okay. So it's test372 and then the bin and then it can be Python 317 or Python 3, whatever. So just put Python. It's the Shebang line. Copy that URL. This is the URL that has what we need. So I just name it URL. You can name it as whatever URL. And usually I will put an F string to wrap around Control V, the URL, because sometimes you might be able to put a curly brace and change the stock um, ticker or whatever name. So um, that's just my habit. It's perfectly okay if you just put the hard link. Import from the request HTML library. I have to import the HTML session, create a, a handler or a session object called session. It is referring to the session method. And I'm going to create a response to hook up to this website. So I just call it response or simply r equals session dot get. Inside the dot get method, I put in the URL, which is here. And it's okay if you put the whole link. Yeah, but it's just my habit to put URL and then I put HTML. Then let me just print that out and see if I can hook up to the website. Press F5 to run it. Then I have this. Actually, if you skip the HTML and run again by pressing F5, you will get a status code 200. The response value is 200. That means you are able to connect to the website. Let me just put it back. Before I move on, I need to define a target CSS object variable. I just call it CSS equals to the CSS element that contains the data. Just go to the data that I want to look up for. This is, let me see what I can get. Yeah. Open, hello, close. So it should be here. This one is close. So seems like this one, the div class contains the data that we want. So you see the highlight 
area. Let me try that out. Div dot co xs. Oh, actually, what you can do is go to the element. This is called the CSS element. Then copy and then copy selector. Whatever. Let me see if I can do that. Let me just print that out. Wow. Actually, it's going to be putting up everything. You can simply look it up here. Let me zoom that in. And you can just copy that from the element table. Okay, it's here. So call dash xs 12 dot no padding. Let me see if I can get this one. And then I will try putting up the first equals true so that it can find the whole thing as you can see that is highlight and then print out the text that is highlight in blue. Okay, let me print this CSS out to see if I can get the text. Press F5 to run. So you see the 25. 692 actually because it is a real-time data so it keeps rolling so this number may not match with this one but you know this 147 is this one and the negative one is like this one it basically prints out everything here okay what i will do is turn this into a list actually there are two ways to do that i can put a split and then whatever, but I don't want to make it too long. So I create a new variable for display purpose. So I make it a CSS list equals CSS dot split. And then I'll try split that with the space. Okay, so I just don't put anything. See if what I can get. Let's see what I can get with the CSS list. F5 to print. Okay, so I have a list here and it's separated with the comma. So basically, this is the zero item 25687, which is this one. This is what I want, right? And this is the second one, which is item one, item two, item three, item four. But it seems like the item zero is what I need, okay? So I just put close equals CSS list and I refer to the zero item, which is this one. Okay. When I print close, usually I will put an F string and then I name it as close colon and then I put a curly brace to wrap around the variable close, which is this one, to see if I can get. The result. So let me press F5 to run. Okay, so I get here 25687.5, which is close to this one, right? So this is the close. And I also need the high, low, and volume, right? Let me just grab this one. But I have to look up for the element for the open hello close. So I just right click and then click inspect. Actually, it's over here. You can see the highlight area, but I want to select the whole area so that I can do the text slicing like the one that I just did for the close. Oh, yeah, this one. The row price row, right? And it should be selecting the whole area. So this one. Div row dot price row. So let me try that out. I just call it whole. Just give it whatever name that you see fit. And then use the R dot find because I need the session, right? So the session is stored in R. Find and I'm looking for the element div dot dot refers to the class right if it is an id you put 
a pound key, but this is a class, so I'll put a dot sign. So I put div dot class. Oh, sorry, no, not class. Div dot row price row row dot price row. And you see a space here, right? You simply put a dot to replace the space, and that's perfectly fine. Okay, price row. And then I put first equals true so that it can select a single element and I can apply the dot text method. See if what I can get. Let me just print out the whole thing. Press F5 to run. Okay, so you see, yeah, this is where we were left up. And this one, the open. Oh, where's the open? Oh, yeah, it should be this one. The last object, right? Looks like that I can chop off this text into a list. So I uh, just, this time, I'm going to simply apply the split text. Like instead of creating a whole list and then equals whole dot split. This time, I just simplify this by putting it back at the whole at the whole variable. Okay, just make it quicker. Let me what see what I can get for the whole the whole list. So I press F five, run it. See this time, the whole text, which is this one, is split into a list, which is wrapped around with a square bracket and what i want is this one right 25648 for the open price which is this one 25648 just bring it up and this is the last of the list right so i just name it open equals the whole which is the whole list and this is the last element Instead of counting like 0, 1, 2, this one, 2, 5, 6, 48, 2. Oh, actually, this is the previous close. You get the idea. Just call it negative 1. And then let me print out previous open, whatever, just to be precise. And then just call it open. You see the open? This open is the variable. Open. You need a curly brace to wrap around the variable inside the string. Okay. And the string is dictated by the F word. But the F word, yeah. <laughs> the F string. So that's the F string that we use to, so that we can mess around the variable with the text string. So let me press F5 to run it. Okay, so you see the 25648.2, which is the last element, this one. And let me look up for the low, 21712. Actually, this is the last one, last two, last three. Negative one, negative two, negative three. So let's try the low to be the whole, whole variable, which is this one. The whole list and the last three negative one negative two negative three okay this should be low okay wow 21 something <laughs> seems like quite a quite a range so just call it low and then let me press f5 to run it See this one, 21712.53, which is this one. Oh, actually, this is the 50 week low. Oh, that's a year low. Too bad. Oh, but you get the idea because you're just like matching the specific space to specific value. Okay. Let me just change that to 52 week low. This one is a string, right? You can't do any calculation. You can't apply mean 
maximum whatever mathematical calculations on that so you need to change this one to a number to a float okay this one 21712.53 so what we can do is replace the comma with nothing and then you get like 21712.53 and then you apply a float okay let me just dot replace replace the comma which is this one the comma with a blank space and then turn the whole thing this whole thing to be a flow okay so just wrap that around with flow and then i keep the variable as low and then i press f five then you will see the 52 week low which is this one is turned into a number so you see the difference between this one and this one you can do the same to the above numbers and i'm just doing one for example that is the basic idea of web scraping and i hope it helps thank you bye bye